What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfect Genetis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about angina and myocardial infarction. We talked about the cardiac arrhythmias, including tachyarrhythmias and bradyarrhythmias. We talked about cyanotic congenital heart diseases and acyanotic congenital heart diseases. We talked about acute fibrinous pericarditis and constrictive pericarditis. We discussed rheumatic fever versus infective endocarditis, congestive heart failure, hypertension, dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. We even talked about broken heart syndrome and pulmonary hypertension. Then we started our series on valvular heart diseases. Today's topic is tricuspid stenosis. Stenosis means narrowing, narrowing of the tricuspid valve, which makes it harder for the right atrium to pump blood to the right ventricle during ventricular diastole. What are the causes of tricuspid stenosis? What are the symptoms? How can we diagnose it? How can we treat it? Let's find out. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, because my liver is already getting congested. This is my cardiology playlist. It has cardiac anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and pathology. A quick review on the adult circulation. Oxygenated blood returns from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart through the pulmonary veins. Now this oxygenated blood is going to leave the left atrium and go to the left ventricle through the mitral valve, which is the only heart valve with two cusps. The rest of the heart valves have three cusps each. Oxygenated blood in the left ventricle gets ejected to the aorta through the aortic valve. This oxygenated blood is going to be distributed to every organ in your body. Each cell will take the oxygen and the nutrients from the arterial side, use them in internal respiration, hashtag cellular metabolism, and then dump the waste products and the carbon dioxide onto the venous side. This deoxygenated blood from the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava is going to enter into the right atrium and then it will pass from right atrium to right ventricle through the tricuspid valve then this deoxygenated blood will leave the right ventricle and go to the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonic valve and then after that you go to the right and left pulmonary arteries to the lungs where your lungs are going to help you exhale the carbon dioxide and inhale some oxygen and the oxygenated blood returns to the left atrium of the heart and you continue the cycle. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop a heart emoji in the comments. So, the heart has four valves. Mitral valve, which is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Tricuspid valve, between right atrium and right ventricle. Aortic valve, between left ventricle and the aorta. And pulmonic valve, between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. Here is a question for you. Where does the coronary sinus drain? Does it drain into the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, or left ventricle? If you know the answer to this question, please comment below. Each one of these four heart valves can have one of two pathologies, stenosis or regurg. Stenosis is difficulty at opening. The valve was supposed to open, but it did not open properly. Regurgitation, also known as incompetence, also known as insufficiency, is different. It's failure to close. The heart was supposed to close and snap shut, but it didn't. It was kept open, which is a problem. What if I have both stenosis and regurgitation in my aortic valve? We call this double aortic. If I have stenosis and regurgitation in the mitral, it's called double mitral. Same thing for the tricuspid. I can have stenosis, I can have regurg, I can have both. Today we're talking about tricuspid stenosis, which is difficulty at opening of the tricuspid valve. So let's draw a right atrium and a right ventricle. Right atrium is here, right ventricle is here, and between them we have the tricuspid valve. Stenosis is difficulty at opening, but when is the tricuspid valve supposed to open? The answer is during diastole of the ventricle, and therefore tricuspid stenosis has to be a diastolic murmur. Just like mitral stenosis, which is also a diastolic murmur, because the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve are equivalents. They are both atrioventricular valves. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. 
So normally the deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium and then you pump it from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. But what if the tricuspid valve is narrow? Therefore, it will not be able to give all of its blood to the right ventricle. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, the right atrium will swell with blood. It will enlarge and we will get right atrial enlargement. This is important. All of that blood will pile up, pile up, pile up in the right atrium, and then it will pile up and accumulate in the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. If you follow the superior vena cava upwards, you will encounter the internal jugular vein. So the internal jugular vein will distend, and we call this jugular venous distension. If you measure the pressure in the jugular vein, it will be elevated, and this is elevated jugular venous pressure. Let's follow the inferior vena cava downwards. What would you find? I would find the liver. Oh, because remember that the liver drains into hepatic veins and these hepatic veins will empty into the inferior vena cava. So this accumulation of blood in the inferior vena cava will eventually affect the liver and the liver will be congested and it will get enlarged hepatomegaly. The hepatic capsule of glacin will get distended, and when it gets distended, it hurts. It's painful hepatomegaly. Follow the fluid dynamics. What's going to happen? Oh, that fluid will pile up into the porto circulation, which can lead to splenomegaly, which can lead to ascites. And then if you follow the inferior vena cava downwards, this will give me edema of the ankle or edema of the lower extremities. Is this edema pitting or non-pitting? It's pitting because it's water. It is a transudate, not an exudate. And this edema is dependent. Dependent on what? On gravity. Therefore, if I am able to walk, the edema will be in my ankles. But if I am bedridden, the edema will be presacral, just below my lower back. And that's why a good doctor should look for the edema in the ankles and if the patient is bedridden in the pre-sacral area as well. If the patient has swelling all over, this is called anasarca. And of course, this can increase the body weight. Why? Due to extracellular fluid volume overload. Next, here is one of the funniest physical exam findings of all time. In normal people, if you press on my liver, nothing will happen. But in patients with tricuspid valve disease, if you press on the patient's liver with your hands, you're pushing the fluid up into the right atrium of the heart. But the tricuspid is narrow, which means this blood cannot go to the right ventricle. So this blood has to go upwards into the jugular vein. So in patients with tricuspid valve stenosis or right-sided heart failure or tricuspid disease in general, compression of the liver causes congestion of the neck veins and you can just play with the patient. Ping pong, ping pong. It is such a hilarious test. I need to have some respect for myself. What is the name of this test? Hepatojugular reflux from the liver to the jugular, hepatojugular. Good doctors should not say that we have a negative hepatojugular sign until you have completed the test for one minute, not less than that. And that's why some people call it the one minute test. If you want to learn more about the anatomy of the heart, please refer to my anatomy playlist here on YouTube, where I have review videos for anatomy of the head and neck, upper extremities, lower extremities, anatomy of the thorax, anatomy of the abdomen, the pelvis and perineum, even neuroanatomy and embryology. Each one of these anatomy topics is covered in three videos. Part one is quick review, part two is ultimate review, and part three is clinically oriented anatomy of that region. If you want anatomy of the heart, watch my videos on the thorax. I mean, if you did not know that the heart is in your thorax, there is no hope for you. Tricuspid stenosis is a narrow tricuspid valve, failure to open. But when is the tricuspid valve supposed to open? During diastole of the ventricle. And therefore, tricuspid stenosis is a diastolic murmur. And it is similar to the murmur of mitral stenosis. If you have watched my video on mitral stenosis, you will recall that we had an opening snap followed by a diastolic rumbling murmur that ends up with pre-systolic accentuation and then 
You reach the grand finale with a very loud S1 sound. Tricuspid stenosis is similar to mitral stenosis, although the murmur of tricuspid stenosis is less dramatic. And what do I mean by this? I mean that the murmur of tricuspid stenosis is A, softer, B, high-pitched, and C, shorter in duration when you compare it to its mitral stenosis counterpart. Where is the best area to hear the tricuspid murmurs? Whether tricuspid stenosis or tricuspid recurge, doesn't matter, you're gonna hear them best in the left fifth intercostal space at the parasternal border. Which parasternal border? The left border or the right border? Of course, the left border. Why? Because this is where the tricuspid valve is, or at least close enough. If you want to learn about this mnemonic that helps you memorize the valvular heart diseases, watch my video on aortic regurgitation. The murmur of tricuspid stenosis is similar to the murmur of mitral stenosis, so it is diastolic rather than systolic. It starts with an opening snap, followed by the low-pitched rumbling murmur. The murmur of the tricuspid stenosis is best heard at the left lower sternal border in the fifth left intercostal space. Because the tricuspid valve is on the right side and almost every murmur of the right side is gonna be accentuated by inspiration, the tricuspid stenosis is no exception. If I inspire or inhale, what happens is that the intrathoracic pressure becomes more negative, which sucks up blood from my ankles to my heart. More blood is gonna enter the right atrium, more blood is gonna pass by the narrow tricuspid valve, giving me a greater murmur. More blood, more murmur. The phenomenon of the exaggeration or the accentuation of murmur upon inspiration is called a positive Carvalho sign. How about squatting? Squatting increases preload and afterload. This increases the blood that passes by the valve. More blood, more murmur. How about raising my leg? This increases preload or venous return. More blood returns to the heart. More blood passes by the tricuspid valve equals more murmur. More blood, more murmur. Less blood, less murmur. What do I mean by less blood? Let's say that I stood up suddenly. When I stand up suddenly, the blood pools into my ankles, away from the heart. This decreases the blood that passes by the tricuspid valve, which decreases the intensity of the tricuspid stenosis murmur. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the French toast you're talking about. Of course, the rule of more blood, more murmur, and less blood, less murmur is true for all heart diseases with two famous exceptions. The first exception is mitral valve prolapse, and the second exception is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. I have a video on this topic and another video on that topic. Both of them are here in this cardiology playlist. Here is everything you need to know about tricuspid stenosis in one slide. The causes. Rheumatic fever can lead to tricuspid stenosis. Carcinoid syndrome can cause tricuspid stenosis. A degeneration of a prosthetic artificial tricuspid valve can cause stenosis. Ergot's alkaloids such as methysergide and ergotamine can contribute to valvular heart disease. Whipple disease can lead to tricuspid stenosis. Myxoma in the right atrium can obstruct the tricuspid valve. And rheumatological conditions such as systemic lupus erythematosus with the infamous Libman Sachs endocarditis. Are these ones sterile or infected? The answer is sterile as sterile as a post-vasectomy state. Signs and symptoms uh, similar to right-sided heart failure, jugular venous distension with increased jugular venous pressure, hepatomegaly, congestion of the liver, distension of the hepatic capsule, ascites, right upper quadrant pain, sometimes even splenomegaly if it's severe enough, positive hepatojugular reflux, you compress the liver, the jugular veins swell, lower limb edema, Thanks to all of this extracellular fluid volume overload, there is increased body weight. Abnormal right atrial pulsations can be felt or palpated. The pressure in the right atrium is high. This is also known as right atrial pressure or central venous pressure. Why? Because the right atrium is the center of the veins. Look at the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. They return to the right atrium. 
On jugular venous wave forms, we notice the tall A wave. The A stands for atrial contraction. When the right atrium contracts, it encounters a narrow tricuspid valve, so therefore the A wave will be taller than normal. Next, the Y descent. The Y stands for emptying. Emptying of the right atrium to the right ventricle during diastole of the ventricle. Since I could not empty well, this descent will not be as robust. Instead, it will be more flat. This is a slower Y descent. We will talk more about these jugular venous wave forms in a separate video. You will find it in this cardiology playlist. The murmur of tricuspid stenosis is diastolic. It's preceded by an opening snap and followed by a loud S1. Inspiration or any activity that increases blood flow across the valve will increase the murmur. How can we diagnose tricuspid stenosis clinically by history, physical exam findings? And whenever you hear a murmur with your stethoscope, the next step is to do an echo, preferably with a Doppler. EKG findings, right atrial enlargement. How do you know that my right atrium is big using EKG? You'll find that the P waves are tall and we call them P pulmonale because it's a right atrial enlargement. But if it's a left atrial enlargement, it's gonna look bifid like this and we call it P mitrale. P pulmonale equals right atrial enlargement and this is a very tall P wave. But P mitrale is a left atrial enlargement and this is a bifid P wave. Chest X-ray, you can find right atrial enlargement on chest X-ray. How come? Remember that the right atrium is the most rightward chamber of the heart. It forms the right border of the heart. So you'll find that the right border of the heart is displaced rightwards. Cardiac catheterization will make you actually see those waves, the A wave, which is taller than normal, and the Y descent, which is slower than normal. It also helps you assess the severity of the situation. How can we manage tricuspid stenosis? Non-pharmacological management, restrict salt. Medical management. If we suspect rheumatic fever, give antibiotics. Suspect endocarditis, give antibiotics. Suspect carcinoid syndrome, treat the carcinoid. If there is a tumor, remove it. And we give octreotide, which is a somatostatin analog. And remember that somatostatin is a doofus. Why doofus? Because it inhibits everything. It even inhibits its own secretion. And it's also doofus because it's secreted by the delta cells of the pancreas. Besides the pancreas, are you familiar with another organ that makes somatostatin? If you know the answer to this question, comment below. If we have symptoms of right-sided heart failure, give diuretics to get rid of this excessive extracellular fluid volume. If there is atrial fibrillation in the right atrium, or the left for that matter, how do you treat AFib? Rate control, rhythm control, and anticoagulants if the patient is high risk. Surgical management of tricuspid stenosis, try to repair the valve, valvotomy. If you can't repair it, throw it in the trash and replace it with a new valve. The new valve could be a tissue valve known as bioprosthesis, or it could be a metallic valve known as mechanical prosthesis or mechanical prosthetic valve. Do you want to learn more about loop diuretics and the other types of diuretics? Do you want to learn about antihyperlipidemics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal medications, and antihypertensives? Download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, cardiac arrhythmias, ARDS, acute limb ischemia, pulmonary embolism, and more, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. My courses come with videos, notes, and cases. And to learn about cardiothoracic surgery, vascular surgery, neurosurgery, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, general surgery, and more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.